Hello, I'm Jana Hector. Welcome to National Focus. Coming up, Parliament adjourns sign a die after passing four new bills. Regional media trained on how to raise public awareness on sustainable energy issues. And Jeff Joe remembered in his community. Stay with us as we bring you details of these stories and others when National Focus returns. Documentaries and in-depth discussions, community walkthroughs, and yes, we care. See it all on GIS Channel 7. Channel 7. Channel 7. Channel 7. Welcome back. The fourth meeting of the first session of the 8th Parliament was adjourned sign a die on Thursday evening after having successfully passed four new bills and approved the supplementary estimates of expenditure for the financial year ending June 2012. The supplementary estimates totaled in excess of $93 million. Also presented at Thursday's sitting of Parliament was the Public Procurement and Contract Administration Bill. The bill was read by Honorable Ambrose George, who is Minister Responsible for Constituency Empowerment. It is universally accepted that public accountability and transparency in procurement decisions are essential requirements of government functions. It is also universally accepted that openness and transparency in public administration by external scrutiny through public reporting are essential elements of, of accountability." Unquote. Madam Speaker, within Dominica, both in government and in the wider public, the issue of procurement has been identified as a very valuable component of governance. As with many other aspects of governance and delivery of government services, this government is seeking to take action which will place Dominica in the league of those who uphold international best practices in these areas. Honorable George also listed a few reasons that necessitate the passing of the Act. The Bill seeks, among other things, to enhance efficiency, competition, fairness and transparency in the use of public funds and to provide suppliers and contractors with the opportunity to review the decisions relating to procurement of goods, services, and works by the government of Dominica and other public bodies. Further, the bill seeks to ensure that adequate capacity is provided within the departments of government, local government authorities, and statutory bodies by modernizing the procurement rules and procedures in line with international best practices by strengthening procurement planning, and by monitoring of public procurement. An amendment to the Public Service Act, Chapter 2301, was commended to the House by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. The age of retirement for public officers will remain at age 60 years, but there will, there will, no, but there will be now be the option for persons to be re-employed up to the age of 65 years. Government will pay bridging pension to public officers between the retirement age and the Social Security pensionable age. Madam Speaker, this bill addresses the second point and seeks to amend the Pensions Act, Chapter 2380, to provide for payment of pensions to public officers between the age of retirement and the, and, and the age at which they become entitled to Social Security payments under the Social Security Act, Chapter 3101. The Act specified that persons who retired before March 1st will be eligible for government pension from the age of public service retirement up till Social Security pensionable age. Parliament's final bill was passed as the Marriage Amendment Act of 2012, as read by Minister for Social Services and Community Development, Honorable Gloria Schillingford. A review of the present system of processing the marriage license application revealed that it is tedious, cumbersome, and time-consuming. It was felt, Madam Speaker, that a re-engineering of the process would greatly improve and enhance the service to the public, while at the same time yielding great opportunities for Dominica to get a share in the new but rapidly growing destination wedding and honeymoon market. Indeed, Madam Speaker, the destination wedding and honeymoon market has been 
a growth market around the world, and more and more countries in Europe and the Caribbean are becoming involved. There is no doubt that much economic activity can be generated from the destination weddings and honeymoon industry. There are definitely great revenue earning possibilities for Dominica if the country is effectively marketed as an ideal wedding and honeymoon destination. There is therefore dire need for expediency in the processing of marriage license application if Dominica is to take its place in this lucrative market and further. If we are to compete with other destinations both regionally and beyond. The new act allows for the Minister of Social Services, Community Development and Gender Affairs to delegate some responsibility for signing marriage licenses to a senior officer of that ministry. The marriage petition will also be replaced by a simpler form and residency requirements will be made more convenient. In other news, at the 64th meeting of the OECS Authority held in Rosalie Bay Resort last week, the body accepted a process that will allow OECS member states to officially establish their ocean boundaries. Chairman of the Authority, Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, explained. We have approved broadly the framework and the process which would allow OECS member states to establish and publish the baselines from which their respective maritime boundaries are to be measured. This is very important if we are going to have negotiations with third countries in the region, whether it's um, other CARICOM countries or countries from Europe which have colonies in the region and therefore interested in the issue of maritime space. And we are trying to work together as one. There's been some discussions outside of that framework, which had taken place hitherto. In fact, there's some agreements from colonial times, for instance, between, um, I think, Dominique and St. Lucia and France, um, which, which obviously we have to take cognizance of because there was a, the independent states, these independent states succeeded to those arrangements. Dr. Gonzalez also stated that the Commonwealth Secretariat is assisting with the technicalities of the venture. He clarified that the move to mark OECS Island's maritime boundaries is important for the management of resources. But this discussion is absolutely important. This work must be dealt with and dealt with seriously because we have more sea space than land space. And we have a lot of maritime resources. And we have to be able to know precisely what are our boundaries, the baselines, so that we can control the resources and work together in some coordinated manner in this single economic and financial space. Also at that meeting, it was revealed that Antigua and Barbuda and Montserrat have been approved as observers in ECTEL. ECTEL is the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority a regulatory body that monitors telecommunication standards in its member states. Chairman of the OECS Authority, Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says Heads of Government is hoping that that move is the first step for Antigua and Barbuda and Montserrat to become full members of ECTEL. On the issue of traveling within the OECS using national ID cards or driver's licenses, the authority revealed that LIAT has raised a security concern that would have to be addressed first. LIAT is requiring the use of a driver's license for travel by OECS citizens within the OECS, indicating that this driver's license, which we require, sorry, should not be used because some of the countries don't have, the, the LIAT doesn't consider that they have enough information on the, these picture IDs, maybe, one or two of the driver's licenses, for instance. And the difficulty comes about not so much with the traveling, say, between two OECS countries, but if you have to 
to pass through Barbados or you had to pass through Trinidad to come to any of the country, or other Oasis countries from another one. We have difficulties, clearly. So we have to engage the Barbadian authorities on this question. And Trinidad authorities too, to see if we, our, our picture IDs can be used. But we also have to have certain matters clarified with Liat. A two-day workshop for local and regional media and communications practitioners on energy efficiency and labeling of household appliances commenced on the island on Thursday. The workshop was organized by the Caribbean Renewable Energy Development Program, or CREDP, in collaboration with DBS Radio and the Dominica State College. The workshop is being held to raise public awareness on sustainable energy issues in the Caribbean region. The rationale for the workshop is to engage those communications people who have got to disseminate information and who hopefully understand that in order to disseminate you have to collect and distill. The media that have the responsibility for dissemination and the government um, organizations as well as private sector representatives and here we've got one or two um, private sector specialists. If we get all of these together then there is a chance that the issue of energy efficiency as an umbrella and energy labeling as a specific area could redound to something useful that will be passed on via the media to our, uh, our stakeholders and the people in the, in the Caribbean countries. Projects like Credit GIZ, but also all other initiatives of governments and development partners in the energy sector can only be successful if we have the full support of the media whose role is critical for increasing and maintaining public awareness on energy issues. This basically what, this is basically what we want to start with this workshop, a dialogue with our Caribbean media partners in order to increase our impact in the energy sector. We need the media's coverage of en on energy issues and your critical questions to governments and utilities and comments on whether the Caribbean region can afford to continue the way energy is being used or even sometimes wasted. Keynote speaker at Thursday's workshop, Minister for Information, Telecommunications and Constituency Empowerment, Honorable Ambrose George, described this week's workshop as very timely. As those of you in the public communication arena can attest, changing knowledge, attitude and practice, KAP, in your professional jargon, is an ongoing challenge, one which we are sometimes tempted to leave to next generation. Unfortunately, that is not an option. Here in Dominica, we continue to work as a team on matters of energy. The economic and social planners, the energy utility, the fuel suppliers, scientists and geologists, the governance and policy groups, and civil society. We are fortunate to be naturally endowed Hence, hydropower from the Trafalgar facility as part of our energy mix for over 60 years and the dream of tapping our enormous store of geothermal energy is soon to become a reality. The minister charged the participants to ensure that the Eastern Caribbean Energy Labeling Project is successful. He noted that critical to this success would be sustained contact and continuous monitoring and reinforcement of public awareness and appropriate practice. In other news, an evening to remember Jeff Joe's contribution to Dominica's musical culture kicked off at 6 p.m. at Matthews Hall in St. Joseph on Tuesday. Parliamentary representative for that constituency, Honorable Kelva Daru, was in attendance along with members of the Village Council the Dominica Festivals Committee, and a crowd of interested persons. The evening took the form of a lecture and discussion. Honorable Daru commended the Dominica Festivals Committee for planning such an event. He also spoke to the young people of St. Joseph, advising them to use the perseverance of Jeff Joe as an illustration of the benefits of hard work and determination. The parliamentary representative cited 
that he had a conversation with Jeff Joe that demonstrated the musician's vision for unity in the community. For us to truly honor the memory of Jeff Joseph, we have to continue to be progressive. We have to continue to work together. We have to break down the walls that divide us, those of religion and politics. We have to break down these walls and we have to come together as one, as a community. We have to continue to build and to develop this country and we have to leave a lasting impression for our children to follow. And I believe if we're able to do this as a community, then I believe that the message and the, the legend and the life of Jeff Joe will in fact have true meaning for each and every one of us. And that is what I believe we have to build a St. Joseph. The event was held in collaboration with the St. Joseph Village Council and chairperson of the council, Vina Roye, claimed the talents of Jeff Joe as resulting from cultivation by the St. Joseph community. Roye remarked that St. Joseph has given Dominica a number of outstanding citizens, including the Kada Slipso icon. Many of us did, were not blessed with the talent Jeff was and how well he carried it through. He made us proud, and every time we hear him sing, we knew that was St. Joe. St. Joseph has, been, has made its contribution to the great sons and daughters of Dominica. St. Joseph is the home of Ralph J. Kazimi, the great poet, and of Isaiah Thomas, whom we will all remember lovingly. And today, we can boast of the president and uh, famous men like our pal rep and previous pal rep, and so many others who are making their contribution throughout the world. So we in St. Joseph can be very proud of our sons. Tonight, we are looking at one who means so much to us, who will keep on living in our hearts through his music. So was Esprit of the Dominica Festivals Committee stated that the organization intends to sustain the memory of the music legend. For us, Jeff was more than a brother, he was more than a friend. He was a hard worker, he was an ambassador, he was a great human being. And for that, tonight we want to celebrate his life. We think that this is just the beginning. Tonight is just the beginning because we think that Jeff really did a lot for Dominica and did a lot for the world that he, his life needs to be celebrated in a big way. And so the DFC and the Discover Dominica Authority, we, we have organized this event and we're getting the support of the Village Council to do this event tonight. But what we would like to see happen is to perpetuate the memory of Jeff. And what we would like to see happen is, together with the DFC, between the DFC, the Village of St. Joseph, that we can do a few things to do that. So we would like, as of next year, to work around the birthday of Jeff Joe. Esprit explained that the intention of future events will be to commemorate the life of Jeff Joe rather than his death. There was also talk of a memorial boardwalk in the musician's honor. Just imagine a wonderful boardwalk coming from Layo and ending up in this beautiful piece of work they're putting at the front of the, of the St. Joseph River. The idea of the boardwalk is not my idea. There were plans already, government plans to build a boardwalk starting at the Tarish pit and ending just, in, just before Teuj under the cliff. These are not my ideas, I just know about it and I was saying that we can utilize this for economic development and economic base. And therefore, this is the thing that Jeff wanted. This is the thing that's the impact. That pride that we have, and Gramax maintain that. And in short, what Gramax and Jeff Joe told us, that our future lies in our history. Dominica's Lady of Song, Ophelia Marie, delivered a presentation on the topic, Jeff Joe, the musical icon. Nobody could determine from where Jeff's energy came. In Martinique, they referred to him as being a bête de scène. That is, a stage animal 
who, even if he appeared to be half dead before coming on stage, and that didn't happen often, huh? but he would rapidly evolve into a stage machine, leading his musicians into a feverish pitch that involuntarily drove his feet and his arms into doing things that only Jeff's crowd could do. Jeff was an assembler of persons. He demonstrated the power of uniting and making us do things together. Levi Lame, Levi Lame, Levi Lame. Even the bishop said it at his funeral. And Pala and Paisi, you, you just cannot forget Jeff. And he's queer, so tay, and he had a kind of something in his voice, you know. Cultural specialist Gregory Rabes presented a lecture that examined the musical and cultural significance of Jeff Joe. He was a musical mentor providing advice to many musicians and singers, not just in Dominica, but in Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Haiti, and beyond. His music crossed the borders, not just the Caribbean, but over to Africa and Latin America. I'll give you one example. Um, I was in uh, Nicaragua many, many years ago. I think it was about 1985 or thereabout. And I went down to this market in, in Managua, in Nicaragua, and I bought two albums by a group called Coastal Dimension. One was a Christmas, Calypso Christmas, Jingle Bells kind of music. The other one was really a reprise, a, 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 a re retaking, a remix of popular Carlos Lipso hits. And among those hits were Me Deba and Rosita by XL1, all the way over in Nicaragua. The same thing happened in Cape Verde, all the way across um, over in West Africa, and in Seychelles, Mauritius, and Reunion. The evening to remember Jefferson Joseph ended with a question and answer segment. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Marcus in St. Louis for the Creole highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole, non moins c'est McFusson Senlos. Premièrement, Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt fait présentation supplementary appropriation estimates pour l'année financière qui sont venus au bout à valer plus de 93 millions de dollars. Honorable Skerritt bat des tailles en parlement, manier le gouvernement dépenser l'argent. Le ministre de l'Éducation a tapé 6 millions de dollars pour te conduire le programme. 18 millions dépensés en ministère et puis et puis l'argent dépensé aussi à ces projets de l'eau. Honorable Scarrett aussi mentionné l'argent gouvernement dépensé à ces network qui m'a payé là. Ministre Développement Communauté a payé 2 millions de dollars pour conduire le programme de développement social. Plusieurs d'autres ministres ont tapé l'argent pour te conduire le programme à eux. Parlement aussi passé législation Procurement Act, ça c'est une manière de contrat qui marche pour divers projets en pays là, Pensions Act, Act Mariage et puis Act Service Public. Parlement a fermé Signed Day. En autre nouvelle, un workshop qui a mené officier communication, discuter des affaires les belles commodités énergie et bagaille comme ça, quand on place en Dominique Simen Salam. Plaisir monde communication tout mon wish oui, là quand attendez workshop de là qui ca prend place en l'occasion State College en Wozo ministère pour télécoms honorable Ambrose George délivre grand adresse pour te ouvert workshop là bon matin là monde qui qui responsable pour pour information uh, uh, energy energy pour 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 utilities uh, pour labeling utilities pour comment nous ca service utilities pour 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 monde qui ca gain utilité ça yone pour garder ça yone pour 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 voir avant yo 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 garder y a yo yo gain utilités là um so in it tout monde hot OCS là avec hot caricom a workshop ça uh in you see representation hot at um DBS representation hot state college là avec workshop là qui point place à deux jours avec um Ikasam qui Um, tout le monde uh, a un bon espoir qu'il a été pour voir uh, comment le workshop là qui est passé avec uh, pour point hot de joie pour voir comment nous a really étudié uh, avec uh, faire mon bas mon information pour ça pour garder uh, 
Bro Standards, mais on ne peut pas pour jouer avec Andassa aussi. Au niveau Bro Standards, on Dominic, et bien l'autre pays est en OECS, à Workshop là aussi. Donc, on peut commencer à faire des formations pour le public là, pour ça, on peut garder pour la Yoka. Là, on peut entrer en magasin pour gagner en radio, pour gagner en blender, pour gagner en télévision. Ça, on peut garder. Pour sentir que ça y a ça y a gagné c'est c'est bon bah qui bon bah qui bon stand bien standard là qui qui international standard avec yo pas qu'ni pièce trois cas là yo mettez ces ces utilités ça en place yo ok yo à la nouvelle gouvernement dominique fait allocation 60 000 dollars la jeune non qui improvement comité qui servit assister moun en dibek et puis une version qui en communauté cela si l'on m'en parle, honorable docteur Kenneth Darrow, il bien plaisir pour et pour le gouvernement Dominique, assister mon communauté cela et puis bagaille pour le développement ailleurs. Nous avons aussi tapé un grant de 60 000 Ça, c'est pour assister à la housing, à la issue de la housing. Nous avons dit que ici, il n'y a pas de l'argent, mais je crois que c'est un bon stat. Parce que um, y a un petit problème, uh, peut-être que ça peut c'est le plus gros problème à l'Ibic actuellement, ça c'est un um, problème de housing. Et je suis très content aussi pour, 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 pour savoir que le um, gouvernement a um, une ni, ni confiance dans l'improvement comité de l'Ibic. Um, parce que l'Ibic n'est pas la juridiction de Pierce Village Council. And, um, 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 Pierce Village Council. So depuis mon entrée par le par mon forme et improvement comité ça l'a dit que avait mon très content il y avait avait proposé que gouvernement ne confiance à dans à dans ce improvement comité ça pour mettre l'argent à dans à dans les meilleurs pour à dans les meilleurs pour comment nous ça nous ça commencer commencer à adresser à mieux ces housing issues à à dire que avait mon confiance que 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 improvement comité a qui fait bien avait yo que yo qui assure que yo que nous spend l'argent ça bien et puis finalement, le management solide de l'Ouest qui et puis village consul tout en pays là, sensibiliser le public là, bon practice, management zodez. C'est l'un officier relations publiques, Jenny Jacob. Initiative ça là, c'est pour tenir un vieux en la propre et puis pour faire l'enfile là, dire plus long. Nous avons gardé pour ce consul là, pour travail et puis solide de l'Ouest qu'on partner, vous savez, pas des noms, information pour disséminer information pour aller en ces vidéos. C'est pas cela, ce village-là, pour aller à terre, à un village-là, pour parler et puis moun à l'école, à un business, place business, pour parler puis yo et puis dire information, bah information à ce comment yo ça ouais des solides ways à faire cette qui l'enfile là par exemple à dire plus que quinze années et puis ça important pour solides ways parce que nous que continuer à dire que moun nous nous que faire cette qui domine que c'est net et puis propre et puis quand nous qu'a dit pas seulement pour ces touristes là et puis les gens qui va venir à Dominique mais premier et puis plus important c'est pour santé monde Dominique et puis santé nous important parce que si nous en bonne santé ça veut dire qui dit qui Dominique qui en île qui 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 n'est plus développement parce que si nous nous en bonne santé nous qui va travailler mais pour payer nous et puis l'esprit nous qui est plus libre mais c'est madame ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent non mais c'est Marc Fosson Saint Louis what? Please stay tuned for the tip of the day. Our tip today has to do with being a good friend. A good friend never gives too much or too little. In every relationship, there is give and take. People give of their time and attention, their money or their love, and take of the same. To be a good friend means to find the right balance of all these things, being careful to not give too much or too little or you might mess up the entire balance. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or comments. Please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. You could also visit our GIS Dominica pages on both YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. Thank you for watching.